Alright guys, welcome back to the penultimate video for outcome two in unit one. And today we are looking at business plans. Okay, so study design and here's where it sits in the study designs, so an overview of business plans, including the benefits of using them and an outline of their key features. So we are going to follow exactly what it said there in the key knowledge dot point. So first off, whoops, so we go to overview of business plans. That's what we'll talk about first. Outline and the key features and the benefits of using them. So exactly what it says in the study design. So first off, what is a business plan? Okay, it's a document, fundamentally. Document that outlines a business's goals and objectives and the strategies, the actions, the plans that they're going to use to achieve those goals and objectives. Now, it's an essential process when starting a business, and I'll put in there especially for raising finance, which I'll come back to in a minute. But um, essential process when starting a business, if you think back a couple of times now in previous videos, we've mentioned this idea that the failure rate for new businesses is pretty high. We mentioned it earlier in the course, we referred to it once or twice since. So the reality is we found out that roughly 20% of new businesses fail in their first 12 months of operating and something like 60% in the first three years. So again, I've mentioned before, my, my thinking is probably that a lot of those businesses that failed probably didn't go through a thorough enough planning process, which includes putting together a business plan in the first place, because if they had done so, they may not have failed or they may not have actually even bothered to start in the first place because part of the planning process is kind of working out if this business is even going to get off the ground, if it's, if it's even feasible that this is going to be kind of a goer. So, um, yeah, the importance is essential, but it's not only important in terms of when you're starting a business, it's also something which, um, of course, it's a living document. It continuously evolves and, and adapts. So this is a document that you kind of keep to hand throughout the life of the business and you constantly adapt and change the business plan as, for example, when your objectives and your goals change, your strategies might need to change. So this isn't just something you do at the beginning and then just put away and forget. This is something that you do at the beginning and then you constantly keep referring back to and amending and updating as necessary. And I've also got in there important for um, starting a business is raising finance. Again, if you're going to go to potential backers, um, investors in your business, or financial institutions to loan you the money to start the business, they want some evidence that their money is going to be safe, secure, or if they're an investor, that they're going to get a return on their investment. And one of the first things they're going to look at is your business plan, because it outlines, as we'll see in a minute, all the different aspects of the business that is going to give some validity to your planning. You've thought about it and you've kind of got a good idea and some actions in place that are going to make this thing work. So you're absolutely, if you're going to rock up to, to see the bank manager, for example, to get a, a bank loan to uh, raise funds to start the business, first thing they're going to ask for is the bus your business plan. So fundamentally what the business plan is, it's a document that defines the direction of the business and provides a focus on how the business is going to achieve any goals and objectives that it has set for itself, one of which clearly is going to be making a profit. So overview of the key features. So look, the great thing about the internet these days is there's lots of resources we can all very easily access. And in this case, one of the things we can access is the it's a federal government website, business.gov.au. And if you click in there, there's tons and tons of resources that um, new and existing business owners can access. But one of the things they have is like a pro forma business plan. So you search up business plans and you get through and you can actually download, as you see here, a couple of pro formas which you can use. And if you use these pro formas, you know that you're going to kind of tick all the boxes that you need to tick. So it kind of provides a direction for some of the planning and the thinking that you need to do when you're planning your business. So business plan template and lean business plan template, the lean one is just a kind of slightly thinned out, slightly briefer version, but you click on whichever one of those you want to do, and then it takes you into this document here. 
and I'll just let it kind of scroll through. So here's a front cover with some basic details, some key details about your business here, business name, so on and so forth, contact details, social media and online details we've got in there. Then we have a bit of a contents page so that the reader can access the bits that they want to access, <coughs> excuse me, more quickly. Then a bit of a, an outline of the plan for the business, what the business does, who your target market is, your new selling point, the goals that you've got, any history that you have in the industry and experience, why we're we here, what our vision and our mission are, a bit of information about the operation, what we're offering, what price we'll be charging, sales and distribution channels, so how a customer is gonna access whatever it is that we're selling, some information about online selling and digital channels, the assets that the business owns in terms of premises, stock and inventory and equipment, any intellectual property that the business has, some information about key staff that are going to be involved in the business if you have them already, some strategies you're going to have around retaining those staff. Now kind of looking a bit more externally to the market, so what market problems are aiming to solve with our business, how are we going to solve them? Again, a bit more information about our target market, some advertising promotion strategies, if we have them in place already, some information about the competition, which is really, really key. A bit of SWOT analysis type stuff you could um, put into there. Our pricing strategies, here's a bit more detail from the SWOT analysis. So we've already looked at SWOT analysis. So um, you could put the information you got from that in there, how we're going to address our weaknesses and threats and so on and so forth. And it keeps going. So you can see this a really, really useful document if you're going to start a new business. And uh, this kind of outlines all the information that a potential investor or someone that's going to loan you money is going to be interested in seeing. So just sort of simplifying all of that, that's kind of the reality. So just a bit of an overview of those key features. And this kind of refers back to the categories that we just saw. So breaking it down into seven kind of key areas, I guess. First off, a cover page. Look, um, this is a professional document. So you want to have a professionally produced front cover, probably going to have your business name and your logo, maybe the owner's names and address, your Australian business number, your ACN, um, you might have the table of contents sitting behind it as well. Then an executive summary, which is just, just an overview of the business plan, which gives a brief description of some of what's to come, um, a bit of an, an outline and some of the strategies that you're going to be using. Um, some information on our branding, so what the owners believe the vision for the business is to be and what's going to set it apart from the competition. Information on the owners and key employees, so the details on them, what their roles and responsibilities are going to be within the business, and also their skills, qualifications and experience. If you think back to what we just scrolled through, you saw spaces for all of this kind of stuff. Some information on the products, a bit more detail here about the products or services that we're actually going to be selling. Um, any competitive advantages that we can offer through those products and services and a little bit of detail around pricing strategies. Pricing strategies is something we look at when we look at marketing, which is the second outcome of unit two. So um, you'll find out a little bit more about those then. Lots of different ways we can work out how much we're gonna sell our products or our services for. Marketing, we also look at in, uh, in unit um, two, so we're going to outline the marketing strategies here that we're going to be using, who is our target market, how we're going to promote our product, how we're going to compete against the competitors that exist or may exist in the market. And then finally, some information on our finances. So this is where investors or potential um, loaners are going to, lenders rather, are going to provide, um, a look at for the financial feasibility of the business. So an estimate of our initial and, initial and ongoing costs that we're going to be incurring, as well as sales and cash flow forecasts that we've come up with. The financial objectives are going to be outlined. And again, all of this included so that we can establish some clear goals and strategies in terms of how we're actually going to achieve the revenue and the profit that we're saying we're hopefully going to achieve. 
And the benefits, finally, the benefits of using business plans. So why, you know, again, it comes back to the importance of them. Look, it provides this clear direction for the business. It really actually, because you categorize all this information, it really makes you think about what are our objectives and how we're going to achieve them. So it really gives us some clear direction moving forward in terms of what we need to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, where, where we're headed as a business and how we're intending to get there. Again, as I've mentioned, helps owners, potential investors, financial institutions make an assessment and make decisions about starting, investing or lending to the business. It results in, if, in some realistic ex expectations or as realistic as possible estimations being made around costs and revenues so that the chances of errors, for example, cost blowouts are minimized. And again, they, they are estimations, you know, in terms of sales. You don't know exactly how many you're going to sell, but you know this is the, the stage where we're starting to make some the best guesses, the best estimations, the best forecasts that we possibly can, so we can start to you know start to put together our plan of action. Um, also provides the business owners with a better understanding of the industry, the market, and the competitors. Again, if you think back to what we were scrolling through before, information they're looking a bit more externally rather than just our business. So it kind of forces you. This process forces you to think about all of that stuff, which is going to be really critical critical to the, you know, the ongoing um, survival of the business. And it can save time and money in the future by allowing the business to plan ahead for potential crises or emergencies or things that might impact the business negatively. And that comes back under the SWOT analysis, thinking about the, the potential threats, because going through this process gets you thinking about those threats ahead of time and already making plans about how we can avoid any negative impact or minimize the negative impact of those threats to the business. And that's all there is to that one, guys. So business plans, key knowledge 10. I will see you shortly in the next video for the very final video of uh, outcome two, where we're looking at social responsibility associated with our business planning. I will see you then. Cheers for now.